how do we stop keeping score? I mean, how do we stop and really change an attitude that actually does us harm? It's that bickering that happens, for example, when mom asks one of the kids to take out the trash and Johnny says, Ma, it's Joey's turn, I did it yesterday. Or that constant squabbling of someone who thinks he's being treated unfairly over something that's really not so important. It's really, for parents, it's really kind of a pain in the neck when they have to keep hearing the same kind of squabbling and they're trying to instill another attitude in their children. But have we adults really learned something different? How often I've talked to spouses who just can't seem to let go of complaining about some flaw in their spouse. Maybe indeed it's something insen insensitive the other one does. Why does he always do such and such? Why doesn't she see and understand? And that can easily become, it's unfair. That observation may be correct, but the attitude of keeping score is really harmful. It may be something sm small, but it begin to fester into something bigger and bigger. So what could be really a good marriage kind of de degenerates and love gets blocked. And particularly now with the COVID restrictions, many more families are spending so much more time together and it's getting hard for some families. It's getting hard for some couples. This limited sense of justice as keeping score doesn't work and it doesn't help. You know what they say, an eye for an eye, and everybody winds up blind. Jesus wants to teach us. He wants to give us a much bigger understanding of justice. God's justice, which is filled with mercy. In this parable that we've just heard from the Gospels, we need to keep our eyes on this king. The servant comes to him with a debt, it says a huge amount. Uh, the, the Greek says something like 10,000 talents. It's really is intended to be this huge amount. Now it would be millions and millions of dollars. Exaggeratedly huge to shock us into another way of thinking. By at the same time, appreciating the unimaginably huge mercy of the Father and the enormity of our debt paid instead by the infinitely worthy, infinitely merciful Son, Jesus. All the servant has to do is recognize his need and ask for forgiveness. Let's hear this parable in the first place as a kind of a love story. God wanting, wanting his mercy to flow into us, to break us out of that egotism that only leads to our destruction, as we see in the case of the wicked servant. It's not that God is blind to what we call unfair, unjust. But his love, his mercy is bigger. And it's that that changes and heals. It's love that heals, not by keeping score. And actually, Acting with justice and mercy together is a lot wiser. You see that way that there are often very much better solutions to confrontations than always butting heads. By God's grace, you can be the one who's willing to swallow, swallow your pride and say you're sorry and start to reconcile even when you think the other person should do it first. It's by God's grace, by his mercy, that you, you can keep on loving, even when it's hard, not keeping score. By grace, by God's grace, you can keep on loving the ones you love unconditionally. It's unconditional love, self-sacrificing love that keeps growing and is life-giving unto eternal life. Our Lady of Mercy, pray for us.